الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علیہ وصحبہ وسلم ام بحبت فلاح ان سہل بن سعد سعدی رحم رضی اللہ تعالیٰ دس از حدیث اف سہل بن سعد سعدی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہما اینڈ ہی سیڈ اینڈ دس از شوئنگ اس دی امپورٹنس of adhering to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and doing righteous and good deeds throughout our life. None of us knows where we're going to end. Uh, no one knows in what state we're going to die. We're going to die on Iman or we're going to die on Kufr. Are we going to die on Tawheed or we're going to die on Shirk? So it's imperative that we continue to try to do our best to remind one another and do righteous deeds. And also from amongst those righteous deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem wa atiu Allah wa atiu Rasul and how many places does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address the believers and says obey Allah and obey his messenger you cannot separate obedience to Allah and obedience to the messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded both of them and you can only obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is why we emphasize following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I know there's a lot of appealing ideologies out there I know there's a new there's new ways of thinking and now you know we're in the context we're in America and we're in this place and we're in that place and it's so many things so many glittery ways and new manas hedge new ways of doing things hey let's ta'awun with ahl bid'ah and be one hand hey let's not uh, 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 speak about one another and let's unify on batil no we can't do that we can't compromise uh, the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abidin we're not it's not in our hands it's not permissible that's why we want to die upon the sunnah listen to this hadith عن سهل بن سعد الساعدي رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم قال إن العبد ليعمل فيما يرى الناس عمل أهل الجنة وأنه لمن أهل النار وليعمل فيما يرى الناس عمل أهل النار وهو من أهل الجنة وإنما الأعمال the Prophet وسلم, said, which is in uh, uh, Bukhari and Muslim, and this is the left of uh, Sahih Muslim. He said, he said that a servant will uh, do the deeds in which the people think, uh, until the people think that he is from the people of paradise. And then, وَإِنَّهُ لِمَنْ أَهْلَ النَّارِ but instead he'll be from the people of fire. So the people think that he's from the people of paradise because he sounds good. He looks good. Looks like he's practicing the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But instead he's of the people of Nar because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala knows how he's going to die or she's going to die and knows what's inside. Are they hypocrite? Are they on Kitab wa Sunnah Sahih? Fa'lan? Are they practicing the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Are they practicing righteous deeds? Or are they hiding so many sins that they can fill this room with the sins and they only did this much good deeds that you saw? And then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَيَعْمَلُ فِي مَا يَرَى النَّاسِ عَمَلَ أَهْلَ النَّارِ And then he, they're the, the one who does the deeds of the people of the people uh, uh, people of hellfire but in fact and wahuwa min ahl jannah but he's from the people of paradise and then the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said wa inna al a'mal bi khawatimiha verily uh, deeds uh, you know are in accordance with you know the last deeds how you ended meaning someone could in another narration that one of you would do the deeds uh, of Ahl Jannah, hatta lo bainahu wa bainaha ila dhiran fi yusbiku alayhi al-amal fi yamala bi amala Ahl Nar. So we said uh, Jannah, I believe. So meaning that some one of you would do the deeds of Ahl Jannah, the people of paradise, until between them is a hand span and an arm's length uh, between them in uh, Jannah, and they will do the people the deeds of the people of, of the fire and into the hellfire. And one of you will do the deeds of Ahl Nar Hatta Bainahu wa Bainaha illa Dharan for Yusbukul Ali al Kitab for Yurkhal al Jannah, Kama Kala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then one of you will do the deeds of the people of the hellfire until he's that arm span away from going to hell. All the time you condemned him. You thought he was going to hell. Everyone was speaking about him. Look at that Kafir. Look at that Fajr. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. 
فَيَعْمَلُ بِأَهْلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَيُدْخَلُهَا He will die, he will do the deeds of the people of, of Jannah and he will enter it. That's why we don't know how we're going to die. Listen to this hikmah of the Salaf Salih. Not these modern day contemporary people who don't even quote from Kitab or Sunnah. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنْهُمْ يُقُولُ الْإِمَامُ إِبْنِ بَطَّالِ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قَالْ فِي تَغْيِيبِ تَغْيِيبِ اللَّهِ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ خَوَاتِيمَ الْأَعْمَالِهِمْ حِكْمَةٌ بَالِغَةٌ وَتَدْبِيرٌ لَطِيفٌ He said there is an immense uh, specific and excellent uh, wisdom but that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his infinite uh, knowledge uh, has hidden how the servant is going to die and what state he's going to die. So there's immense hikmah in this. And he says, وَذَلَكَ أَنَّهُ لَوْ عَلِمَ أَحَدْ خَاتِمَ أَمَلَهُ لِدُخُولِ إِعْجَابِ وَكَسَلْ مِنْ عَلِمَ أَنَّهُ يُخْتَمُ لَهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ he said, and that is, meaning this wisdom is, that if a person knew how they were going to end, how they were going to die, you know, then they would, they would be puffed up with pride. And they would become lazy in doing righteous deeds because they kn knew they were going to be the people of Ahli Iman. They were going to die on Iman. This is the nature of people. And then he mentions the opposite. ومن ومن علم أنه يختم له بالكفر يزداد غيًا وتغيانًا وكفرًا. And so the one who knows that they were going to, would you know this is hypothetical. If a person were to know how they were going to uh, die and they knew they were going to die as a uh, as a disbeliever. They would only increase in their disobedience. They would get it all in. As the philosophy, the, the ideology now, uh, live fast or die young or, you know, all these other variations of that. That you want to get it in. You know, so the people would be getting in the sin. They would be living in disobedience and just immersing it because they already know they're going to the fire. You know, what the heck, I'm going to the fire anyway. Let me just go buck wild. So this is the reality of Benny Adam. So uh, then he mentions that this is from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that way it keeps the servant between khawf wa raja, between hope and fear so that they're not, so the one who's obedient to Allah, he doesn't get amazed at himself and puffed up with pride by his deeds. Oh, I did this good deed. I did that good deed. And the one who's a sinner, who's doing all these sins, they do not give up. On the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they don't know. They don't know. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive you. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless you with that hidayah and that tawfiq. To leave off those wicked sins. And maybe the one who's on obedience and ta'atillah. Maybe they're going to fall into that. So that's going to keep them uh, fearful. And keep them increasing. And haris al-ilm. On knowledge and righteous deeds. That's going to keep them on that. And so it's very important, habit of Allah. Because, and so he says, the, the last part, then he mentions, he said, so this keeps both uh, parties, meaning both those types of individuals, it keeps them on the edge of, of thought, Allah, obedience to Allah. You know, feeling humility and humbleness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, belittling themselves especially before their creator. And that's imperative for us to do a habit of Allah that we have to continually remind ourselves. We don't know how we're going to end. Look how many people that you've seen. This is only what you've seen in your limited lifestyle, life, uh, lifetime of people who went astray. I can think of many people. I know people who were students of knowledge with some major scholars in this time who are not even Muslim anymore. Some became agents of various establishments, like work for every from the CIA to the Danish intelligence to this, to this, to this, and just total uh, left uh, Islam and Iman for a shirk, for, for ilhad, for kufr wa zandaka. And I know others also who are broken, hardcore takfiris, then the agents broke them. Now what are they?
I'm not sure if they're even Muslim or not. And we know other ones who thought they were really strong Salafis. Now, far away from Islam. And we ask Allah the Almighty for ikhlas with Thabat, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.